In the previous video, we learned how to create a store using the writable function. Such a store is called writable store, which implies you can read and write values to a store. But sometimes you might not want other components to be able to update the store value. You still want the value to be shared across the components, but just not allow the components to update the value. In such cases, you can make use of readable stores. To understand readable stores, the example we are going to consider is displaying the current time in the browser. Let's say you're building an app where you need to display the current local time. So the time has to be shared across multiple components, but you don't want any individual component to update that value. In other words, you need a readable store. Let's understand the syntax and usage. In the stores file, we create a readable store for which we import the readable function. So import writable comma readable from svelte slash store. Let's call this store as time. So const time is equal to readable. The initial value is going to be the current date. So new date. Although the store is readable, it doesn't mean we cannot update it. The readable function accepts a second argument, which is a callback function. This function receives a function called set as its argument, which we can use to update the time. In the callback function, let's create a timer to set time every second. So const interval is equal to set interval and this accepts a callback function. We also set the second argument which is the duration for the interval, one second. Within the set interval callback function, we call the set function passing in the current date. This will update the time store every second with the current time. Of course, if we have a set interval, we need to clear it. We do that by returning a function from the callback function. So after set interval, return a function, which is going to clear interval, and we pass in interval. All right, now that we have the readable store, let's display the time value in a component. Exported from stores.js and then in the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called timer.svelte. Within the file, add a script section and import the time store. Import time from store slash stores.js. This time value itself though, needs to be formatted for us to understand the interval updates. For that, I'm going to copy paste a function which formats the date time value. And I've called it date formatter. Now in the markup, we can render an h2 tag which says the time is date formatter dot format. We pass in dollar time. Let's include this component in app.svelte. and head to the browser. You can see that the time is rendered and updates every second. We can use this time store value in any component, but the component itself cannot update the time since it is a readable store value. All right, we now know about writable and readable stores. We do have a third type called derived stores. A store whose value is based on the value of one or more other stores is called a derived store. Let's quickly take a look at an example. At the moment, we are displaying the current time. Based on this, we can derive the time the page has been open in the browser. So let's understand the code. In stores.js, 
we begin by importing another function called derived. This lets us create a derived store. First, we need the time the page was loaded. So const start is equal to new date. And then we can create our elapsed time, which is derived from the current time. So I'm going to export const elapsed time. And this is going to be equal to the derived function that we have imported. This receives time as its first argument. And the second argument is a callback function where we take the dollar time store value, subtract time minus start, and then divide it by 1000. So seconds instead of milliseconds. Every second the time updates, elapsed time is now recalculated. Let's render it in the timer component. Import time and elapsed time. And then another h2 tag. You've been viewing this page for dollar elapsed time. Take a look at the browser and we see the current time and the elapsed time since page load. As you can see, stores can be pretty powerful. All right, we have one final detail to look at, which we will do so in the next video.